Hi, right. everyone. Thank you so much for having me. I'm very, very excited to uh, be a part of this conversation this evening. And I'm really looking forward to the Q&A afterwards. Um, I'm going to use the next uh, 45 minutes to kind of take you into uh, the crazy and magical world of natural perfuming um, and share a bit about myself. Um, you know, today is really about us getting to know each other. And more than anything is about me being able to express my immense passion for this magical world. Uh, and again, I'm just so grateful to see so many people also have an interest in this world because it truly is something that is very special and very unique within the space of perfumery. Um, and like I said, at the end of it, we'll have about 15 to 20 minutes where we can engage in some Q&A. So I will um, leave some space for that. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to jump out right right off the gate and start with a bit about uh, who I am and what I do. Um, obviously, my name is Douglas Little. I've been involved in the fragrance and the beauty industry for over a little over 20 years. Um, the way I got my start was I started off out of design school and thought that I originally was going to be going into really product design and focus my efforts on uh, the world of hair care and cosmetics and started my career at about 21 and quickly realized um, that I loved it, but I had a real issue with the fact that there was a huge lack of transparency in the way that products were being created and also what products were being created out of. And so uh, about the time that I was 30, I decided to take a leap of faith and I started my first collection of home fragrances, which was called D. Ellen Co. And uh, wanted to create, again, a slightly different dialogue around fragrance and around what inspired me. So that first collection of fragrances that I did was inspired by a lot of poisonous plants. Um, and I really wanted to share this concept of finding beauty within the kind of dark spaces of the garden and also how that reflected within our own personal psychology. Uh, I ran that company until about 2009 and then I sold it uh, and took a break for a while, moved to New York and then uh, really wanted to drill into if I launched a new company, what would it be about? And I really wanted to do something that was around my core passion, which was about natural fragrance. And uh, I wanted to be able to see if there was an opportunity out there to connect with other people that also had an interest in natural perfuming and kind of a, a interesting side note about how actually the company got named Heretic was uh, I was speaking at a conference in New York about emerging beauty trends and they had asked me what I felt the future was. And I had said that I really felt that Whole Foods was quietly training us in the United States that the, about this curated experience and about that we all know to go to Whole Foods for a product that is that is slightly better or that we know where the ingredients are coming from. And that I felt that eventually this would trickle into beauty. And I said, obviously, skincare will be the first frontier, but I felt that fragrance was also going to be kind of on down the road. And I said specifically, the reasons why I felt that, that natural fragrance is going to make an appearance within this space was because of the fact that it is so personalized, it is so unique, and there's so much there's so much personal DNA that's connected to the actual material, and that we can speak about it in a different way. And there was this very astute perfumer from a, a very high end perfume house who uh, got into this bit of a row with me on the panel, and she said, uh, "You know, look, I think that you should be honest with the audience that natural perfuming, while you may love it." it will never be anything more than the work of housewives and heretics. And it really hit me in this really bizarre way. And I, we kind of were arguing it. And she said, you know, look, you need to be honest with the audience. Natural perfumes, they don't appeal to a broad amount of people. They're very expensive to come by and they're not consistent. And I said, you know, I'm sorry to interrupt you and I'm sorry to get into a debate with you about this, but it's all of those reasons is why I want to work with them. And I was like, I actually believe that there's a customer out there that eventually will not want to have a fragrance that's identical over and over and over again. I think that we're going to get to this split, this space where what we think of as niche will become much more specific and much more unique. And natural perfumes really let are the road to that. So fast forward, I left that day, I got into a taxi, I called my lawyer and I said, let's trademark the name Heretic. And she said to me, are you out of your mind? No one in the world wants that name. And, and that's how the company actually got its name. 
Um, and, you know, the word heretic is a very loaded word. It's a very barbed word. Um, I, I love it and it fits me very well because of the fact, I think growing up uh, as a redhead, I never felt like I fit in. I always felt a bit like an outsider. And also, I think I've always challenged the status quo. Um, I, you know, have always had an interest in things that necessarily were a little left of center. And uh, so the word heretic for me, it really embodies my personal DNA. But more specifically, the word heretic means someone with an opinion that's different than that of the masses. And when I was trying to get this line off the ground, it was unbelievable. You know, I launched this collection in 2015, and the goal was to do a collection of fine fragrances made from naturally dried materials. It seems quite simple. And it also seemed like there was a lot of other competition out there. And in 2015, there really wasn't. And it was just fascinating to going into these huge perfume houses like IFF and Givadon and from Maniche. And I'd sit down with the perfumers and I'd show them my formula and they would say, that's great. We have absolutely no idea how you're going to do this or how you're going to afford it. And we really have no interest that it's ever going to, to have any traction. So good luck to you and, and on your way. And now it's amazing. And I feel very blessed that, you know, we're now in 2022 and the line has slowly gained, you know, popularity and we have a customer base for it. And just a couple of weeks ago, I had, you know, IFF take me to their new facility in Palo Alto to talk to me about business. So it just is really about that the industry is going through this massive shift and that there's this huge draw for transparency and there's a huge interest for naturals and what they can do. And uh, that was really something I wanted to be, get behind and I wanted to speak to. I also uh, you know, really believe that people are finally questioning what's in their fragrance. And I think that as customers, we should have the right to be able to know exactly what it's made from. And I don't think that people should skate underneath the clause of what they call the perfume clause, um, that, that it is some type of proprietary secret, because that really is, to be honest with you, it's it's doesn't hold any relevance anymore, especially in today's day and age when you can basically find out how anything is made and what it's made from. And so as a consumer, you should be able to log on to your favorite you know, fragrance brand and see what the fragrance is made from, click on an ingredient and understand is what does that ingredient do? Why are they using it? And what are the potentially harmful effects if there are any? So, you know, those were very important factors for me. So that's a bit about me. Um, you know, I also really wanted to make nature sexy. I think in this space of uh, Alchemist Kitchen and the reason that you guys have all found it is probably because of your love of nature uh, and also because of their healing powers. I've always had a huge issue with the fact that the word natural, it always equated to being boring. Um, and it, it, it either was like the packaging was like super hippie and granola or it was just less than. And I never felt like nature was any of those things. For me, nature has been my greatest teacher. Um, it is it is not only sensual and sexual, it is spiritual, and it's a very deep connection that I have to it. When I'm not perfuming, I've got my hands deep in the dirt, and it is my greatest lesson that I have every single day that I love to celebrate. And so I really wanted to bring that forwards in a new capacity and show nature for how powerful terrifying, sexual, amazing nature truly can be. And so the names that I use, the way I speak about the plants, the way that we develop fragrances are very much about putting these plants and flowers in a first person perspective. So, you know, for instance, we have a fragrance called Florgasm. And the story was when I was building that fragrance is what would it smell like if a flower had an orgasm? And then I started to build that idea in working with these natural materials. So, you know, that gives you a little bit about kind of where we go with the fragrance and what we do with it and kind of the direction of where Heretic is headed and, and what I intend to do in moving forwards. So that gives you some understanding of who I am and what I do. Um, you know, what is natural perfume? So natural perfume means fragrance is made from natural materials. It's really not that complicated, but you know, in this day and age, there is some complication around what is considered greenwashing and around what is natural, what is traditional, and then what is clean. So I just wanted to kind of start off by saying natural perfuming means in my world and in the world at large, that the fragrances are composed of materials that are derived from nature. Now, even within that category, there is some splits as to 
whether or not you feel that uh, isolates fall underneath the world of natural perfuming, I think that is a that is a conversation that we could get into a bit later. Uh, so those of you that don't know, isolates mean that they are an isolate that comes from a plant, but they are still plant derived. I personally love working with isolates. I think that in today's day and age, if you're creating a, a fragrance that is designed for more commercial use, you need the help of isolates to be able to get it over the hump of what people considered natural uh, or the, the olfactive profile of natural. Uh, what is traditional perfuming? Traditional perfuming means that you are using aromasynthetic materials to create fragrances. Many times traditional fragrance houses will also incorporate naturals in a small capacity. So uh, it, it does not necessarily mean that they're strictly synthetic, but it does mean that it is a composition of synthetic and natural materials. And then finally, what is clean? So clean is probably the most unclean word that, word that you could possibly use now because it's being used by everyone. Um, and there's a lot of speculation as to you know, when a company is stating that they are a clean fragrance, is it actually clean or is it just traditional? Uh, a lot of companies, you'll see them use, you use terminology like no phthalates. Uh, phthalates haven't really been used in fragrance, mm, I mean, not really since the 70s. Uh, and so if a company is saying that they're not using phthalates, does that make them clean? Well, it may mean that they're just jumping on the bandwagon. And I'm not here to point fingers I want to be very clear up front that I'm an artist through and through, and I don't believe that there is any right or wrong way to make art. It's your choice on what you make it from. I just feel that the most important thing is the transparency, is to be able to know exactly what the fragrance is being constructed out of. So that kind of gives you some idea. A lot of clean companies will have their own, what they call a no-no list. Uh, and the no-no list will be various materials that that company deems not to be fit for their customers. So again, you know, it is very much based on the interpretation of each individual and how that individual is going to market and sell their products. I just really wanted to make fragrances from naturally dried materials. And uh, funny enough, I had no intent on being part of a clean movement. I just wanted to do something that was dramatically different within the industry. Uh, so what are the pros and cons of working with naturals? So um, let's start with the cons first, because that's always fun. Uh, naturals do not last as long as synthetic fragrances. Very simple to understand. These are a natural materials, essential oils, absolutes, and concretes uh, are a byproduct of the plant. They are distilled using various methods from uh, steam to CO2 to hexane. Uh, there's a myriad of various new materials, even cold pressing now, that can be used to extract these beautiful raw materials from these plants. Um, the aspect or the good and the bad is that it's a byproduct of the plant, meaning that it is not necessarily engineered to cover up fragrance like synthetic materials are. So synthetic materials, synthetic aroma chemicals are engineered at a laboratory to be olfactive. So what does that mean? That means that these particular molecules are being engineered to cover up fragrance. So they're going to be inherently extremely, extremely fragrant. You need a small amount of them to be able to do a tremendous amount of work. Um, the thing and a good analogy of what is natural versus what is synthetic is this one. So uh, synthetic materials, I always like to say they're a bit like oil paint. You'd choose oil paint when you'd want to put something strong to cover up another color. So any of you that have done any paintwork on your house, you know that you'd pick oil paint in very specific rooms uh, because it is durable, it is strong, and it goes on very opaque. Natural fragrances are like watercolors. They are very sheer, they're very transparent, and they're, they're alive, um, but they are transparent. So the downside of that is, is that these materials are not going to be as olfactive as a synthetic material. So when you wear these fragrances, these fragrances are going to have this sheerness to them. They're going to wear much closer to the body. They're going to uh, not project as loudly as synthetic fragrances will. So again, I think we've all had this experience of kind of walking into an elevator and having someone's fragrance walk in and it bitch slaps you, 
bitch slaps you across the face. And all you want to do is get out of the elevator because you've had this terrible encounter with someone's like big, bold fragrance. The thing with natural perfumes is they just don't do that. I mean, even your most like intense patchouli, it may radiate a little bit more than your your synthetic, but it's still not going to have that same effect that you get with synthetics. A lot of people, uh, funny enough, have very adverse reactions to synthetic materials. So you get a lot of people when they're, when especially when I get people coming to do custom fragrance with me, they'll sit down and they say, you know, I'm concerned about doing this because I have a very, I get very bad headaches when I go into a department store. And then they quickly realize that this is a totally different world. And people will spend two, three, four hours with me. And they're always blown away when they leave that they've smelled, you know, 60 materials and they they don't have a headache. They don't have that feeling of nausea that you get because again, these materials are natural. They just have this transparency to them that, that synthetics don't. Um, I would say that probably the most important aspect of naturals for me is that Naturals for me are genderless, and it's what I did with my company. I have never believed that fragrance should be gendered. It didn't make sense to me when I was in my youth. It doesn't make sense to me now. I believe that fragrance, whether it be natural or synthetic, the only reason that you should have it in your life is for it to be able to make you a better version of yourself. I really believe that fragrance is this vehicle that connects us, this kind of primordial aspect of ourselves that allows us to step into aspects of our masculine and aspects of our feminine, and sometimes somewhere in between. And it is this invisible material that allows us to step into this space that really gives us it can give us confidence. It can calm us down. It can make us feel more sensual. Uh, it can connect us to the heart. It can do all of these things. But it doesn't, for me, I just don't think that fragrance necessarily should be gendered. And so within the natural space, I think it's very easy to be able to speak with clients and to speak with people about that because these materials, they they lack the marketing, they lack the packaging um, to be able to say to someone, this is a masculine or this is a feminine. And even within, for those of you that know naturals, uh, smelling something like a grandiflorium jasmine or a jasmine sambac, uh, you know, they have a muskiness to them, even the florals that, you know, a synthetic cleaned up version will not. And so these inherently, these materials, I think they straddle this world uh, of the androgynous in the most magical way. And as the perfumer, of course, you can push it and pull it into something that goes more lyrical or something that goes more uh, into the woods and into these kind of more resiny bases. And I think that that's another aspect of naturals that truly makes them, you know, so absolutely fantastic. Um, and then, of course, I think there's a, a lot of questions about, you know, how are like what are the differences between the notes within natural fragrances and the notes within synthetics? Um, they're very much one and the same. You know, perfume is constructed out of uh, a lot of terminologies of what they call single notes, what they call chords uh, to make up these of how you would blend or how you would construct a fragrance. You know, very much it's all the same idea Within naturals, I think the thing that makes naturals so fascinating is that naturals are a bit like, um, they're a bit like diamonds or crystals in a way, because naturals are quite faceted. Uh, remember that naturals, like for instance, uh, if we're talking about like a rose essential oil, a rose essential oil is composed of a little over 300 odor molecules that make up what we know of as the aroma of rose. When you're talking about a synthetic material, most of the times these molecules, they have been uh, carefully picked out and they are the cleaned up or sanitized versions of what a true rose essential oil is. So when you're working as a natural perfumer, it's actually quite a bit more difficult because it's a bit like assembling a complicated puzzle with a lot of sharp, jagged points. And you've got to figure out how to put that puzzle back together so that when you smell it, that there is some type of softness or there's some very clear direction on it. It's very easy with uh, synthetic materials to be able to construct a fragrance because synthetic materials are a bit like building um, something with cotton balls. Um, they're round, very soft, 
um, materials that's very easy to put them together and to build something that has a really beautif beautiful olfactive effect. So in essence, I think working with natural perfumes to create something that's more commercial is, uh, is really challenging. Whereas working with synthetic materials, you have the opportunity of creating something that will appeal to a very broad audience uh, quite, quite easily. Um, so single notes, getting back into what are notes and what are chords, single notes would be considered things uh, as simple as uh, a bergamot or a rose or a jasmine. And then chords very much just like music is when you take and you combine these materials together, they then become chords. So, and that is the terminology in the way that these are constructed. Fragrance is constructed in a pyramid effect, what's called top notes, heart notes, and bass notes. Uh, what is a top note? The top note is going to be the first thing that you're going to notice in a fragrance. The heart note is going to be the dry down out of that top note. So it's going to be the second aspect of the fragrance that you're going to encounter. And then finally into the base notes. And the reason that these are categorized into these, this construction is based on their molecular structure. So top notes typically are always going to be your citruses and spices, uh, some woods, but basically what it boils down to is the molecular structure of these particular materials is very small. Therefore, they diffuse at a very, very rapid rate. So therefore being the first thing that you're going to notice in the fragrance and also is going to be the first thing that's going to go away. The heart notes, which typically are going to be your florals, these have a slightly larger molecular structure. They're going to evaporate a bit slower. And so therefore they're going to come out just after your top note. And then finally, your base notes have the largest molecular structure. These are the heaviest materials. These evaporate at a very slow rate. And this is going to be the last thing that's going to be left on the skin. It's going to be the last thing that you notice in a fragrance. Base notes are typically going to be your roots. They're going to be some herbs. They're going to be some spices. And they're going to be a lot of your wood family. So the base notes are these kind of wonderful, very uh, fatty materials that really allow the fragrances to have depth and to have complexity. So a slight sidebar um, regarding the psychological and the way that we interpret fragrance is that, uh, again, remembering that top notes are citruses and spices. People that tend to be really attracted when I'm doing my custom fragrance work, I really get to put this into practice and to see it. Uh, people that tend to be attracted to these top note fragrances. So again, these are your citruses, your bright kind of light fragrances tend to really want a uh, very easygoing lifestyle. They tend to be looking for things that are going to be uplifting. They're looking for things that are going to be happy. Um, they don't want comfort. They don't enter into conversations that are too deep or too intense. Uh, and they tend to have a lot of what would be considered acquaintances in their life. Um, and then people that really are driven or drawn to florals or the heart chords, they have this very deep connection to the heart center or the heart chakra. They make decisions based on the heart aspect. They have, they treat friends like family. They have a very deep connection to uh, people from uh, this kind of creating this um, sense of community around them, um, and they make decisions that are romantic decisions. And then finally, the base notes, people that are attracted to your patchoulis, your labdanums, your, your auger woods and ouds, these deep, mysterious fragrances tend to be very spiritually driven. So they are very much, they do not uh, make flippant decisions. They tend to be very deeply connected to uh, interests and um, are have this, you know, kind of almost um, sixth sense about them. So um, again, no real fact to any of this, but definitely a lot of work in doing these custom fragrance sessions and getting to work with some uh, clients that I've come to learn, you know, these aspects. I think one of the other things that's been interesting in doing this custom fragrance work with people is um, the fact that when you come and you work with these materials, I always consider these materials a bit like medicine in a way. In that, and what I mean by that is, you know, what you were attracted to this week or today will likely be very different than next month or next week. And it's interesting to kind of keep a close gauge on where your interests are within the world of fragrance, because again, it is the mind, it is the body speaking to you, and it is 
the mind and the body asking and requesting for some of these materials to be present. So for instance, if all of a sudden you're not a floral person and you find yourself very much attracted to florals, you should lean into it and understand that these materials, the, the concept of wearing florals is the concept of connecting to heart and the concept of, of trying to open up that heart space. And so these materials can work in that way and they can be much bigger than just the pure cosmetic use of them. And that for me is, I think, the most powerful and magical aspect of my work within natural perfumery is really is helping people to understand this mind-body connection that goes far beyond, far beyond the cosmetic and uh, can truly connect us to better versions of ourself. Um, we've covered a tremendous amount of material. I feel like I've uh, been on like on a one giant run on sentence for the past half hour. Um, I'm hoping everyone is uh, learning something today as I uh, speak into my screen. <laughs> um, as uh, I'm, are you still on this call? I think you're on mute. Mm, I still can't hear you. Can you hear me now? I sure can. Oh, awesome. So, uh, wow. Well, I think that we've gone through a tremendous amount of in information today. Um, and I would love to use, uh, you know, the time that we have still to dig into some questions because I've seen a few chats pop up. Yes. Um, I'd love to be able to dig into some more information for people um, and then hopefully uh, answer some intriguing questions. Before we start with the questions um, and some comments from our audience, I also would love, love, love to share a story and interaction I had with one of the uh, people that came to the store and purchased your, your fragrance. So this lady came and she bought like two sets of the, the big bottles. So they're, they're not, you know, they're, they're, and I was surprised. I said, so, so um, what was, what brought you here and what was the interest? And she said, I had this experience. I was at the bar and I have five guys come to me, you know, and say, that's an amazing fragrance, whatever you're wearing. And she said, I did not project any, any energy out to attract guys because I'm gay. So I'm I came back and I, I came back to the alchemist kitchen rather than ordering it online, which, you know, I'm, I'm very grateful for that. And she said, I'm going to a, a, a gay bar tonight. So I'm purchasing this and I'm hoping that I do get to attract what it, what I really want. <laughs> so I, I, wanted, I wanted to share that with you. I've been holding on to that story because, you know, I, I was going to share it with you and, and Matthew on an email, but I was thinking it would be better to share it um, as a, to the group as well just so it is powerful medicine you know there is no doubt about the mind body and spirit connection um and i just want to take us back um douglas to your very beginning when when you were talking about design school um and hair care and and you were challenged uh, by the lack of transparency and you started your first company because you you were attracted to the poisonous plants you sold that and you and because of that panel um what was your biggest obstacles then uh when you started uh heretic what was the uh, i guess the the challenges you mentioned you know talking to the industry leaders and all that um what was it like uh i would say that the biggest obstacle um in starting the brand was definitely understanding the uphill battle that I was facing at the time with doing something unique and different. Um, it seemed, you know, I think from my naive perspective, it just felt like um, when I was taking this concept to these big fragrance houses, it seemed like they would be in full support. And it was, it was unbelievable to see how much resistance I was met with. Um, and, you know, also when I started, um, I, 
was launched, the brand launched at Barney's in New York. And um, it was really interesting. They put me right next to Byredo and La Labo. And I was there with my, you know, eight fragrances. And I'm telling you what, it was the biggest lesson of my life was being on that sales floor and having the customers come in and they would, they would, they would walk in and they'd be like, Hey, I love gypsy water. What do you have? It's like gypsy water. And I would say, uh, I have nothing. Like, <laughs> I didn't know what to say to them. Do you know what I mean? Because it was like, I, this is, this is not the same thing. And I, and that was a big eye opener for me was also when I was speaking about notes and I was talking to them about like, well, this particular fragrance has, you know, coriander and pink pepper, and this has this really beautiful rose de mai in it. And they would lock on to something and be like, oh my God, I love rose de mai. Uh, so can you, you know, let me smell it. And so I would give it to them and they'd be like, well, this, this doesn't smell like rose at all. And I was like, well, in fact, it actually has real rose in it and not the synthetic version of it. And so it's very difficult to be able to enter into this conversation with a customer that has never actually smelled real rose or real materials. And that was a big eye opener for me was how it was, it was definitely the, excuse my language, everyone, but it was the holy shit <laughs> moment where I was like, what did I do? Um, because I was like, no one, no one, am I going to be able to sell any of this? That was a big question. And then the other thing was, which I knew was going to happen, but people would come in and they would smell it. And I would get some people then I'm going to give you a ratio. I would say like 2% of people would be like, oh my God, I'm so excited. I found you. I've been looking for this forever. They would get really excited. And I was like, yes. And then the other 8% of the people were like, um, this smells like medicine. And I was like, oh, great. Do you know what I mean? It was so hard to be able to really get people um, to understand what I was doing in the beginning. And I think that that was the hardest thing was really you know, as a brand, as a young brand, when you've got a product that is so polarizing, how do you connect with people? How do you find your tribe? And uh, that was a really difficult moment for me. And it, it's taken a long, I'm still finding my people. Do you know what I mean? Like today, I'm hoping that, you know, people on this call that, you know, we're all from the same place of really, you know, being inspired and loving nature and wanting to, wanting to live a more, you know, connected lifestyle. And, um, and, you know, that this, these conversations, I think, are so important to have right now, um, because we're all right now, while we're so disconnected, I think there's moments like this, where we have this amazing connectivity that's happening. So I just want to mention some of the comments, Jade, the, the rule mentioned, too many times I've been bitch slapped with fragrance. I have a high sense of smell, which can be not so much fun. <laughs> I think that's going to be a t-shirt moment, bitch slap yes. with fragrance. <laughs> yes. Um, some comments from Leah Diaz. Wow, I love foods, wood, dip fragrances. When I was younger, I would wear Hermes for men. Um, and, you know, that's also something else just to, I'm going to put a hook in for a second. So, mm -hmm. you know, this past weekend, I was really I, I'm very blessed that I was asked to go uh, to be a part of this experiential house in Pebble Beach with Range Rover. And uh, I really thought to myself, what, who, who is going to be interested in what I'm doing at this thing? It's, you know, this prestigious car event. And um, I was so blown away with one, how excited people got by coming into the space and seeing natural fragrance. Um, and it just totally floored me, the connection that people had to this. Uh, two, you know, a lot of these people that were attending have seen a lot of things. And mm -hmm. it was also refreshing to see that they had not experienced this or they were experiencing fragrance in a different way. But specifically regarding women wearing men's fragrances, it, it happened like numerous times over the weekend where I would sit down to blend a fragrance and the woman would sit down and she would say like, I love wearing... I, I heard Hermes men's fragrances like three times over the weekend. That's why I'm remembering it. And they would always say, you know, it always feels weird that I'm wearing a men's fragrance. And this goes back to what I was saying earlier, this like not understanding of the gendered aspect of fragrance. And that, you know, to me, again, gendering a fragrance makes absolutely no sense. Uh, you know, I really think that you know, if, when you, if you are attracted to something, be attracted to it. Do you know what I mean? Allow it to become part of you and allow it to embody you. But this aspect of it, of, of feeling like 
it's odd or different or not of, you know, this, this, like anything that is lack of, which is, you know, a conversation that is very concerning. It should never be a part of fragrance. And, you know, with dudes, it's always amazing when I sit down with men and uh, so many guys, obviously at this car event would come in and, you know, they would, um, they're, here's my organ that's behind me. It's all these like nondescript bottles with a label on them. And I would put rose or I would put jasmine or I put osmanthus in front of them and I'd watch their faces light up. And it was like they had discovered, you know, something brand new. And they'd be like, wow, I would never pick a, a rose fragrance. And, you know, they would just feel like they had this epiphany moment. And I think that that is something very special within the natural space, because you do allow people to have this, you know, very unique experience that's very different than what we know of traditional fragrance. Um, I'd like to piggyback on that. Uh, Bretman Rock is a, um, a, a makeup artist, and he was asked, will you come out with a, a makeup brand for, for men. And he said, no, because makeup is for everybody. It's like coconut water. There's no gender in coconut water. Why am I going to create something that is like specific to a gender? It's for everyone. And so, and, and I think that it's amazing that concept that uh, you're putting out there that fragrance is really genderless. You know, that's such a powerful uh, message. That's going to be another t-shirt moment right there. Uh, Daria Amaranth, uh, is requesting, could you please tell me if you collaborate with the photographers and if you do, to whom can I send an email? I'm a fine art and conceptual photographer and I would love to create a photography series for your fragrances. So thank you so much. So we'll, so. Uh, certainly we can absolutely, I think what we can do is uh, we can even put, send out a link. So uh, anything can be directed. Uh, it's real easy to just direct the emails to me. It's douglas at hereticparfum.com. Um, so if you've got questions or anything along those lines, please uh, send me an email. We're a, a tiny but mighty little team that that makes uh, Heretic chug along. <laughs> Lots of comments there saying you're... Um your your lecture or your talk is very insightful um i can't wait to try heretic fragrances uh smudge i stopped wearing perfume curious to try your fragrances i also love the name heretic is my my profile in human design that's from janet g uh the Diaz is asking, where can we get Heretic in New York? At the Alchemist Kitchen. And we are planning, Douglas and I are, are in conversation on having a class to dive a little bit deeper into uh, fragrances. So watch out for that. Sign up for our newsletter and you'll be informed of uh, all of our classes. Uh, I was... Um, Danielle is asking, I was wanting to start combining essential oils to produce scents for myself. What carrier oil would you suggest for these? Oh, that's a great question. So, you know, there's so many amazing carrier oils now that are available. Uh, I would highly, highly recommend anyone who has an interest in doing their own uh, fragrance concoctions. Um, I'm sure that the Alchemist Kitchen carries some um, carrier oils. It would not surprise me. Um, but if you're looking for an alternative or for some other resources, try um, Eden Botanicals. It's E-D-E-N Botanicals. Um, the owners are, are great supporters and friends, and I buy quite a bit of materials from them. Um, they have a really interesting assortment of carrier oils that are really unexpected. Um, you know, everything from like pomegranate seed to, um, black cohosh. Uh, I just tried a cumin oil that was magnificent. I think the thing that's interesting within this world, and we're probably going to step into it next year, which is body oils, scented body oils, um, is that, the carrier oil and even like making perfume, remember that perfume is roughly 90, 80 to 90% alcohol. And so if you're spending thousands of dollars for these materials, it doesn't really make any sense to use a subpar 
carrier oil or alcohol. So, you know, we, when we make our fragrances, we blend in organic non-denatured sugarcane alcohol. Um, and I choose sugarcane alcohol because the sugarcane imparts this kind of soft sweetness um, to most of the fragrances. Some natural perfumers use grape, grapeseed alcohol, uh, grapeseed alcohol or grape alcohol. As some people call it uh, also, they, it's also called an eau de vie, um, has this really interesting sweetness to it as well. Um, now there's even alcohols that are available that are derived from coconut. Um, I just tried one from lychee and the lychee alcohol was, I mean, I felt like I was having a religious experience. It was, <laughs> so it was almost a perfume on its own. The, uh, the and, heavens opened up and the angels came down. Yeah. But I mean, you know, everyone, guys, everyone on this call, I mean, it's, it's, this is, everyone did this. Like you guys have are the ones that are doing this because you have an interest in this material. And what's happening is that the industry is responding and there's, there's more interest. There's more, you know, products that are being made available to us to work with. And it just makes the landscape so much more interesting. I mean, when I started, it was like, you know, even just the world of natural materials that I had to work with, the deck for natural perfumers was so small. And now there's just thousands and thousands and thousands of materials that have come into the market that are coming out of the food industry, that are coming out of the perfume industry, that can be used within creating these really unique olfactory profiles. Um, but back to the point, my favorite carrier oil for um, essential oil blends usually is grapeseed oil. It's, it's probably my favorite. Um, I, I also, um, yeah, I, I guess I would say grapeseed oil. I, the only thing I would say is the downside with grapeseed oil is that it doesn't, um, it's shelf life is about four to six months. Um, and then you would have to remake it because these oils do have a tendency to go rancid. So Raquel was saying, we are your tribe. I have five or six and use them according to my mood. Uh, Sonia Company says, thank you for the masterclass, Sonia at Lore Perfumery Australia. Heretic Sandalwood remain our number best-selling fragrance in our perfumery for fourth consecutive year. Oh. Lore Perfumery Melbourne. Love um, it. Delphine Fant uh, says, where can I buy your perfumes in Australia? Oh, there's the Lore Perfumery. Uh, we ship, ship, interstate. Thank you for making natural fragrance. Raquel says, thank you for making natural fragrance. I'm so, al I'm so allergic to chemical fragrance. Ooh, Raquel asked, where can we get, to, where can we go to get a custom blended fragrance? Just email me, douglas at hereticperfume.com. I can send you all the details. Um, we do the, so I do Zoom uh, sessions now for custom blending, which is a fun process. It's it's pretty wild. We do a kind of a meet and greet to get to know each other. And then uh, I blend a base and we go back and forth. Typically it's like four to five FedExes that go back and forth between us. Um, and it's a really interesting process. You get to learn a lot about yourself, a lot about the materials. Um, so it's, it's, uh, it's wild. It's better to do it in person. If you can, if you're in Los Angeles, I, I love doing them in person. Um, but if you can't, we can always do it via zoom and good old FedEx. Um, I saw a question that just popped up about something regarding fragrance composition. Ezra, Ezra, sorry. That's okay. Uh... How does Nat, oh, let me just go. Yeah, they're, they're coming fast. <laughs> oh, I can't find it. I would love to do a custom blend and great to know you can do it via Zoom. I'm, I'm in New York, Jad, Jade Darun says. Uh, Lewis Harrell asks, do you compose with pure raw materials or do you use diluted materials in your organ when you're constructing a fragrance? Great question. Ooh, that's a good question. Uh, so I do it the old fashioned way. Um, I do them at a hundred percent, um, which is, it's like, um, it's like painting with spackle. That's all I can say. It's <laughs> these materials, if you've experienced natural materials, they are no joke. You know, these materials are very intense, um, but I tend to like to blend on the spot, meaning if there is a material like, for instance, um, seps or mushroom absolute, um, you know, at 100%, it smells like um, Marmite. 
um, is probably the best description of it. But when it's diluted down, it were it you know it starts to go into this world that becomes yeah. this kind of mossy, petrichol, wet rock magic. Um, yeah. And again, I would rather have the ability of, of kind of understanding what is the profile I'm going with and start with the concentration and then to build it out than to start with something already diluted down and have to work the other way around. Max Spitz says, I'm a copywriter. Do you do all your own copy? Love the clever naming conventions for the sense. So we do. I do write most of the copy myself. Um, I have a uh, writers sometimes that I collaborate with, um, obviously shoot me an email. I always am loving to uh, work with new artists. We have done some, um, if you followed the brand, you know, one of my favorite things to do is to pick uh, some kind of unusual characters um, to focus a highlight on. So um, we obviously have our collaboration with a very dear friend of mine, the incredible Dita Von Teese, um, who I would say for most people, she wouldn't represent natural fragrance. <laughs> <laughs> um, however, I love her to pieces. Yeah. And I think the reason why I wanted to work with her so much uh, was because of her understanding of the world of the sem of the of the world of the sensual and getting people to connect to the sensuality in a very unconventional way. Um, and then, of course, uh, Violet Chachki, you know, who was a fantastic collaboration, and I felt really spoke to the concept of, uh, the world that straddles somewhere between the masculine and the feminine and how powerful the world is. And we shouldn't forget your collaboration with Gwyneth Paltrow as well. Oh, yes. Good old GP. <laughs> <laughs> so Tina Stenson says, I am just starting but have wanted to do this for years. Lost with all, lost with all my ideas. Opening a small store soon, but you have calmed my nerves a bit. Thank you. You should be calm. You know, I think that the adage of if you build it, they will come. Uh, that is what is the takeaway should be from this because I had uh, so much trepidation stepping into the world of fragrance. I think it was rightly founded, um, but you know, this world is a terrifying one, and it's from the outside looking in. It can be. It can be. It can feel very daunting and it can feel yeah. like it's, it could yeah. never happen. And uh, what I, all I can say is if you have an idea and you're passionate about it, put gasoline on that idea and just let it go because people will, people will come. You know? And I think Alchemist Kitchen is a great example of that. Luis Ariel says, how does natural scents and fragrances translate to candles? Do they have a good hot throw? Woo, these are some good questions, people. <laughs> uh, I can tell you natural candles suck. Uh, it's my nightmare. <laughs> uh, I love them. I absolutely love them. We still make them, but they do not perform as well as, uh, as synthetic fragrances. Um, I just, and I love burning candles. Um, you know, my first company was a candle company. And so I have a real connection yeah. to the ritual of lighting yeah. candles and uh and the whole concept behind uh what they do but as far as their throw um here's the biggest problem is that you have to load the candle with so much material um that it becomes all just to be very straightforward with you our candles uh, when we sell them, we're almost at a break even in our candles. There's almost zero profit margin in them. And I do them because I love them and because I want to share them. But I mean, when my accountant looks at what we sell these candles for, um, and the problem is, is that, you know, look, hey, everyone on this has bought a candle. You guys know there is a lot of, I'm sure you pick up a candle and you look at the price and it says $75 and you're like, um, you know, maybe not like maybe later. Um, and the thing is, is that if you're going to spend $75 on that candle, that thing had better make you coffee in the morning and brush your hair. I mean, it's like, you want it to do everything for you. Uh, and the thing is, is that natural candles, they just don't project like a synthetic candle will. And so what happens is, is people will buy, they'll take the risk and they'll buy the $75 natural candle. And then we get these emails where people were like, um, it doesn't throw well. It, you know, my, my whatever candle, you know, it fills rooms and rooms and rooms. And I'm like, well, that's because it's a synthetic fragrance and it's engineered to do that. And so 
We have a couple candles that I think really perform well. Our smudge candle is one of my, I'm having it burning right now behind me. And that candle for me is like my ride or die candle. I throw it in my suitcase. It goes everywhere with me uh, and it throws well, but you know, it's tough. It's really tough. To, and also within the natural space to do something interesting olfactively, you know, yeah, you can make a great clove candle. You can make a great, lavender candle but honestly like we've all smelled so much of this it's like do we really need another one um so to do something that's interesting to do something that's outside of that space it's really challenging um we've got a couple candles coming out this fall um i can debut it a bit on this call i'm launching a candle this fall that wrecks me and i'm so excited about it uh it's going to be called dirty books um mm -hmm. and it is inspired by erotic literature um, and it is like a combination of old vintage library books, old leather, um, maybe having great sex on these books. Like it's a combination. It's a little raunchy. It's a little right. It's all the things. So that will be uh, a fragrance that is coming out this fall. But I wish we had more candles. So. So uh, amazing. I'm, I'm going to be looking forward to that. Uh, Leah Diaz says, curious about how you get inspired for new fragrances and if there are still notes or essences you would like to create. Oh my God, there's not enough time on this call to get into all that. But um, the answer is absolutely, you know, yes, yes, and yes. My inspiration is very much still coming from the space of uh, trying to tell these stories of plants through a different lens. Um, and really seeing where that takes me. Um, you know, I'm, I'm very interested in, I'm always inspired by materials. So just recently I received a package of like 90 new materials that came into the marketplace from this incredible resource, uh, called Bioland, um, out of France. And, uh, they sent me some new materials that just, you know, were endlessly inspiring. So I'm tinkering with those ideas. Um, I think, you know, to make to make life interesting for me as the artist, I'm probably going to start launching what I'm calling some couture fragrances, meaning that these fragrances are done in small batches. There may be 20 or 30 bottles done at a time. They'll be more expensive, um, but it will allow me the space to kind of venture into some real, some real weirdo fragrances um, that may be don't appeal to a huge broad audience. And um then we have our, you know, what we call our kind of ready to wear, which is, you know, the dirty series, the dirty grass, dirty coconut, dirty vanilla, uh, and so on and so forth um, that allow me to connect with a bigger audience. And, you know, the goal of this is, is to uh, keep growing the collection and keep building this community and then bringing unique ideas within the space out. I mean, we launched our insect repellent, which again, I did because it was something I was blending and wearing. And it, this year, it all of a sudden took off and people have been really excited by it. Um, you know, so I'm excited to kind of venture into these more unexpected spaces uh, with natural fragrance because there's so much that can be done. Um, you know, these materials, they can, they're very powerful antiviral, antibacterials. You know, they can do all of these magical things. They don't necessarily need to be relegated to uh, the hippie store. You know, they can be super chic and super beautiful. Delphine Font said, I'd love to have you as my mentor. So we have about five more minutes. I'm going to go through um, the comments. Uh, Raquel says, please, please, please make those couture fragrances in the travel size. Um, Delphine Font is asking, I've been looking for a supplier of natural fragrance oil, no synthetics. Can you recommend a supplier anywhere in the world? Absolutely. There's so many. Um, there's so many great resources. It just kind of really goes into where or what you're looking for. Um, the woman that I did my understudy with, who I still love, I mean, she, I just recently saw her when I was up north. Um, I always recommend uh, visiting aftalier.com, Mandy Aftel. Uh, she truly is one of the, she is the queen uh, of natural perfumes. Um, and she's written several books. Any of you that have an interest in natural perfumes, read her book, Essence: The Essence of Alchemy. It is um, truly a life-changing book. Um, and 
She has an amazing assortment of really rare, unusual materials that you can buy uh, in small quantities. And then um, check out Eden Botanicals. Um, also, another one that's really inexpensive is Liberty Natural um, out of Oregon. They do some really beautiful materials as well. Huge collection of, uh, of really nice materials to work with. Mandy Afto, uh, I saw a, a can, yeah, can uh, you please spell sure. her name? So Mandy is M-A-N-D-Y and Aftel is A-F-T-E-L. And her website is Aftelier. That's A-F-T-E-L-I-E-R.com. I'll put that in the recap um, and also the recording as well. So we have uh, three minutes left. Any final wor words, Douglas? Well, or I... I would just like to summarize by, you know, thanking all of you. I, I'm, I'm seeing a few of your beautiful faces on the screen as we go through this. And I just want to thank you uh, very, very much for spending this hour with me. Uh, I'm really looking forward to doing something. We're, we're talking about doing another class uh, where we might actually do a blending session. So we would be doing a live blending session um, together and, um, I saw from Suzanne, uh, the company is called Liberty Naturals is the one in Oregon. Um, so I'm hoping that we can do this blending session class in the fall. And then uh, I'll be making a pilgrimage from out West to come to do hopefully something at uh, Alchemist Kitchen. We were even talking about maybe something witchy during October. So uh, it'd be super fun to connect with all of you if you're going to be uh, on the East Coast. And um, again, Thank you for your time. And I wish you guys all a really blessed evening. Great. Thank you. Cheers, everyone. Bye now.